For this lesson, we'll be going over Norton's theorem. Norton's theorem runs on the basis of a linear active resistive network which contains one or more voltage or current sources can be replaced by a single current source and a parallel resistance. By simplifying down a circuit to a pair of terminals, the engineer may recalculate the change in the circuit parameters based on the resistive load. The overall goal of Norton's theorem is to simplify a complex circuit into a single current source and resistance. As you see in the illustration below, we have a very complex and utter chaos of uh, branches and sources on the left and on the right. We simplified it down to a single current source and a single resistance, which we'll do in the later exercises. To simplify down a complex circuit to a Norton equivalent circuit, we're going to follow four simple steps. Step one, we're going to remove the resistive load. Second, we're going to find the Norton resistance. By doing this, it's going to be similar to Thevenin theorem. We're going to short all voltage sources and open all current sources. Third, we're going to restore the circuit back to its original form. That's by restoring all the voltage sources and current sources. And then instead of leaving open between the terminals, we're going to place a short there instead. Then we're going to find the Norton current source by using circuit analysis methods. And we're going to go over a few examples of this next. For this exercise, we're going to start with a relatively easy problem. This problem has one voltage source and two resistors. So we're going to try to find the Norton equivalent of this particular circuit. So let's go ahead and go through our steps. Step one, remove the load. So all I did was just copy it and just remove our load. So step one complete, remove the load. Second, find the Norton resistance. So we're going to do this by shorting the voltage sources and opening the current sources. I do not have any current sources, so all we have to do is short the voltage source. So I'm going to cheat again. Let's get rid of our voltage source. And I'm going to go ahead and add a short where the voltage source was. Okay. So now we have to find the resistance as if we had a meter between points A and B. So going this direction. This one's a very simple one. We only have one resistor and it's in series, so that's 20 ohms. So our resistance for this particular equivalent circuit would be 20 ohms, okay? Step three, we're gonna to have to short the terminals. Now it's implied when you're finished with step two to restore the circuit back to its normal form. So I'm gonna go ahead and short the terminals. So I'm gonna add a short right here. And then we need to find our current. Now I wanna find the current flowing through points A and B. So this is what we're looking for. That's the whole point of shorting those two points. Unlike Thevenin, we're not looking for voltage, we're looking for current. So in order to do that, we must complete the circuit. So current's gonna flow this direction. Well, this one doesn't really require any major circuit analysis. We can do this with simple Ohm's law. So this one, we're gonna use V over R. So I have 10 volts divided by 20 ohms equals 0 0.5 amps. Very simple. So we have our current source and we have our resistance. So, so our final circuit, again, always note the current source direction. And I'm going to do my best to draw this out so it doesn't look totally bad. A, B. And we have our resistance of 20 ohms and our current source of 0.5 amps. So that will be our final answer for a Norton equivalent circuit. All right, let's go on to a slightly harder problem. All right, this next problem, we have something that's a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna come through it just as easy. Instead of a voltage source, we have a current source this time. And we're gonna follow the same steps as last time. So, step one, we're gonna remove the load, so I'm gonna cheat. Step two, we need to find the resistance between points A and B. So, same as last time, I said if I stuck a meter between these two points, and we also need to short the voltage sources and open the current sources. 
Well, I have no voltage sources, but I do have a current source. So I'm going to cheat again. So we have the current source removed. Now, this is if we had a meter between points A and B and wanted to find the resistance between those two points. Well, unfortunately, the 3 ohm resistance is dead ended. It's not completing a circuit, and there's no current that can flow through it at all. So, the only thing a meter would see would be that 4 ohm resistor. So, between points A and B, that's all it would see. That one's pretty simple. So, R would equal 4 ohms. So, that one's pretty easy. Now, we need to short the terminal. So, let's go ahead and restore our circuit. Step three, we're going to short our terminals. So, let's go ahead and short these two points. Next, we need to find our current. So, we need to find the current flowing through points A and B. Well, now this one may look complicated, but it's actually very simple. If current was going to, or excuse me, if current was flowing through the 3 ohm resistance, it's going to go to this branch right here. Well, back to basic engineering that you learned in college, current is going to flow through the path of least resistance. Well, since we shorted points A and B, the form resistor is pretty much not even there. Creating a circuit similar to what we see here. Let's see if we can make it look halfway decent. So that, in a sense, that's what you would be creating. And all we're doing is trying to find the current flowing through those two points. Well, since 10 amps is flowing through the 3 ohm resistor, it's going to flow uh, through that branch as well. So that would give us a current of 10 amps. That's very simple. So now we can find our Norton equivalent circuit just with those two items right there. So let me move this aside. Our Norton equivalent circuit will look just like this. And again, see if I can make it look somewhat pretty. And then we'll come out. Points A and B. And this will be 4 ohms. And this will be 10 amps. So this will be our final answer for our Norton equivalent circuit. Alright, let's try one more problem, but let's go with something a little bit harder. All right, for this last problem, this one's going to be a little bit more trickier, and we're going to, have to, we're going to overcome this with the same rules. And this actually might be easier than you think. So, step one, we're going to remove the load. So it's going to remove that, that uh, resistive load between points A and B. Right there, we went ahead and removed our resistive load. Next, we need to find the uh, Norton resistance. So by doing this, we're going to short all the voltage sources and open all the current sources. So I need to short the voltage sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those and add and put a short in their place. So let me remove them. And then we're going to add a short in their place. And same thing as last time, we want to know the resistance as if we put a meter between points A and B. Well, I see the 7K in series and the 10K and the 5K resistors in parallel. So it would be 7K plus, it's going to be 10K in parallel with the 5K ohm resistor. So when plugging in this in our calculator, it come out to be 10.3K ohms. That's relatively simple. So I'm going to put right here, our Norton resistance is going to be 10.3 K ohms. All right, so now we need to restore the circuit back to its normal form. And now we need to short the terminals between points A and B. So I'm going to go ahead and remove our load one more time. And let's go ahead and short between points A and B. So I'm going to add a short right there. Now we need to find the current flowing through those two points. Okay, this one, let's go ahead and use mesh analysis. By doing so, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and state our current and current direction. I'm going to go ahead and say this one's I1 and this one's I2. Well, we're going to come up with our, our mesh analysis equations. 
I'm going to start our equation off with 0 equals, and look at the current direction, so we have negative 10, and I'll put a volt there, that way you know, plus 10k, and this is going to be I1, plus, and this is going to be 5k, I1, minus 5k, I2, because the current for this loop is going the opposite direction of the, of the second loop. So it's going to be negative 5k I2. And we're going to go ahead and add all of our common currents together and move our voltage around. So it's going to amount to be 10 equals, and then 10k plus 5k equals 15k I1 minus 5k I2, 5k I2. Alright, now for our next one, move a few items around, that way it makes it easy on us. Alright, so that's going to be equation one. Let's go for our second equation. Let's do the second loop. So, same thing as uh, earlier, we're going to go zero equals, and we'll, you know what, start with the uh, voltage source, I'm always a big fan of those. Say negative 5 volts plus 5k I2, 5 K, I, 2, and then it's going to be minus 5K, I, 1, same reason as last time. The current flow this direction is the opposite of uh, I, 1, so, and then we got plus 7K, and that's going to be I, 2. And again, we're going to add our common uh, currents as well as move our voltage to one side. So we have 5 volts equals, and this will be, we'll keep them, we like to keep them the same. So if you have I1 at the start, then I2, I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to say five, negative 5K I1, and this is going to be plus 12K I2. That way when you plug this in your calculator, you have common variables in both equations. So you can look at them and go, okay. The first variable is I1, the second variable is I2, and so on. So this will, act, so this will come out to be our second equation. So let's go ahead and plug this in our calculator. In our Casio, we're going to go ahead and plug and chug some of these equations. Now, just like in the mesh analysis training session, we're going to go ahead and use our equation function in our calculator versus the matrix function. It's just quicker and cleaner. All right, since this is a two variable equation, we're going to use option one. So we have option one. And the first equation we have 15,000 or 15K for I1. Then we have negative 5K for I2. And that's given us a 10 volt for our C. Okay, next, next equation. We have negative. 5,000, 5K for I1, and then we have 12K for I2, and also 5 volts for our C equals, and that's going to give us an output of 9.35, 10 to the negative 4 for I1, comes out to be 0.935 milliamps, and for I2, 8.06 10 to the negative 4 amps, which comes out to be 0 0.806 milliamps. So that's going to be our final answer. So now we have final answers of I1 equals 9, excuse me, 0.935 milliamps, and then I2 equals point 8, 0, 6 milliamps. The one we're concerned with is I2 because we're looking for the current flowing through points A and B. So I2 would be your Norton equivalent current. Let's go ahead and plot this in a Norton equivalent circuit. It'll come out to be current. We have a current source. 
resistance, and then of course points A, points B, and as we established earlier, our resistance is 10.3 K ohms, and our current is going to be 0 0.806 milliamps. And that will be our Norton equivalent circuit.